Okay. So we will start our session. Thanks for your patience for everyone that showed up on time today. What we're going to start to do is um, just try to prompt you a little bit earlier because we all do have time commitments. So um, wherever possible, if you can be here at three o'clock, it means we can start and finish on time, which is, of course, really helpful for all of our really busy schedules. So um, we now are up to our next workshop for all Leader Mary. And thank you for your time in coming today. Um, it's going to be focused a little bit more on our tribe. So talking about our community, talking about culture, and um, we are going to touch a little bit around um, some of the strengths-based leadership that we didn't um, get to cover last fortnight when we were together. But to start, I'd like to acknowledge the Gubby Gubby people of the Sunshine Coast and pay respects to their elders past, present and emerging. And of course, extend the welcome across all of the lands on which you're meeting us today across Papua New Guinea. Oh, buyers coming in. Okay, so keep in mind today, because it is a collaborative workshop that um, your frame, your camera frame is sitting around your face so that we can all see each other. Um, if you're working with a team today, like there's more than one person um, sitting next to you, that's going to be really helpful because we will do a collaborative activity. However, if you're by yourself today, we are going to connect you through a breakout room with another participant to complete an activity. So keep in mind while we're doing that activity is that you're um, really conscious of whether your microphone's on or off and that your face is in the frame so that we can connect with each other. So our learning today is going to be focused on that strengths-based activity, as I mentioned, the one that we didn't do last fortnight. We're going to cover a little bit around growth mindset and fixed mindset, um, which you might already be familiar with from some of the work we've done previously. And we're going to start to talk about how our tribe shapes our culture and leverages improvement. Okay. So um, we do have our team with us. Emmeline should be up there as well. However, we've got Pauline and Medi and myself today who are going to be facilitating some of the activities. Um, so today we are going to, as you know, keep focused on that our tribe and always that start time will be at three o'clock. I know we're starting a little bit later today, but for the next two sessions where we're focused on designing for women, Let's do our best to try and um, arrive a little bit before three o'clock so we can kick off on time. So our flipped task this fortnight was around exploring bias. There were three papers that were sent across our um, WhatsApp chat um, and your task was just to read through them and think about, well, what really connected with you? What extended your thinking? And what was challenging for you? Okay, we had a few people respond to the feedback loop itself. However, I wanted to create an opportunity um, for us to share back some of our thinking about these. So what I might do is if you or one of your colleagues had a chance to read through this, um, can you just put your hand up, your little icon, just so we know. And it's okay if you didn't have time to read them. I'm just trying to gauge um, who might have some dialogue to contribute today. So if you did have a chance to read those papers, can you just raise your hand on your toolbar? Okay, that's great. Thank you. So what we might do is refer um, to the group. Oh, it's taking me to the paper. I might just refer to the group broadly because I know um, there was probably about half of you who had read through those articles. And if there was anyone who would like to um, share either what connected with them, what extended them or what challenged them. And you might not respond to all of those things, but if you'd like to share one of the insights, um, please feel welcome to. And I do have your name, so I might refer to you. Um, because I know Josephine, I read some of your feedback. Would you like to um, share some of your insights after reading that? All right. Um, thank you, Hannah. Um, the challenge that I see in our country is um, 
like one of the articles said, the parents are scared to send their girls to the schools. And I was just thinking that if the government can convert some of these existing government schools to girls' schools, that we will have all girls in just one school and no teachers are females, then that would be great. I think it's going to um, alleviate that fear in the parents in uh, not allowing their kids to, uh, especially the girls, to attend school. So if we have these existing schools, if we are going to build new infrastructures, it's going to take time. Mm. So the challenge is for the government if can convert these existing schools into girls' schools only. Yeah, fantastic. That's a really great insight. And was there, um, while I've got you unmuted, um, were what were some of your thoughts around um, what connected with you, and maybe some of the you know comments in the articles that extended your thinking a little bit? Um, one of the things that I saw, um, I thought it was like the ladies in PNG only face that. I never knew like more like the female in Katrina. She wrote the article about at workplace they are also belittled. Mm. So I thought it was in PNG only our custom or our tradition that it's a male that will dominant, dominate all the, everything. Mm. But when I saw that, I, it enlightened me also a little bit on the white ladies also are facing that. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a really great insight. Thanks, Pauline. Um, did anybody else have a chance to reflect on um, those three questions in relation to the reading? Um, and would anyone like to share with the group? Um, so I'll keep moving. With this flipped task particularly, I was one of the things that really connected with me was in Dr. Kirsten Ferguson's work. She talked about this, um, you know, these four stages of bias. And I guess this links a little bit to, um, you know, what Paul, uh, what Josephine had to say around, you know, that women all over the world experience, um, you know, experience inequities in different ways. Um, but for me, when I started to read some of her work, it made me think about um, where I have been in my life and that you do have this different level of awareness depending on what cultural background you come from or you know, how you experience um, inequity at different times. So certainly for me, there was a long time that I, I thought, you know, well, everything's pretty even in Australia, you know, and I kind of had that thought like, oh, well, I, I have lots of opportunities um, and I kind of can do what I want to do. But, um, and I used to just accept that um, the way sometimes other people were prioritised over me, particularly men, was just the way it was. Okay, and as I've got, gotten older, I started to assess, well, what, why it, do I think that way? And why do I accept that way of working? And um, why does this bias exist? Um, is it cultural? And who's um, reinforcing this bias? And how is it impacting not just me, but our greater community? So um, I found that that part really challenged me and it made me really start to think about um, how we be conscious of our biases, but also how we start to support, um, you know, the mindset of other people around um, how we, you know, are creating equality or, or um, equity as such. So moving on from there, I always talk about, you know, there's different points of truth we come across in, in our lives and in the world. And um, what I've learnt and what we know is that women are strong, women are capable, and they are role models. So how do we bring those strengths to the front of what we do every day? And we can do that through networks. We can do that independently. And we talk about how we can do that through our voice. So that we talk about the amplification effect, okay? So we know that um, we have certain capabilities and strengths that we bring 
to all of the roles in our lives as professionals, as family members, as community members. And it's only through our voice that we're able to like lift and validate some of those strengths and actions and validate each other's. So we're going to go into an activity today around strengths, okay? So all of us have our own strengths. We all bring capacities and capabilities, like I said, to our professional space, our personal space, our communities. So when I start talking about strengths-based leadership, it's about having the ability to identify your strengths, but also make the best use of your own and your team member's strengths, okay? So typically we know the things that we're good at and we typically inherently use those things that we're good at. This next activity is going to be about really pulling that stuff to the front so we're cognizant, we're saying, yeah, we understand this strength and looking for those strengths in other people as well. Okay, so what I'm going to ask because this is a collaborative activity, you need to do it with a partner as a minimum. Um, if you are by yourself today, can you um, give me a hand up on the screen so that I can put you in a breakout room with someone else? So Mary, oh no, you've got someone sitting next to you. Uh, okay, Meriba, you're by yourself. Uh, Pauline, you are by yourself. Sharon, you are by yourself. Um, okay. Bye. Mm -hmm. And Mary, both Marys. Okay, that's great. So I will try and put you into a, um, a breakout room with uh, another lady so that you can um, communicate. What you need to do this activity is a notebook and pen and you need your empathy and listening skills. That's pretty much it, okay? So if you have your notebook, I'm going to ask that you create three columns in your notebook. So I've got mine. I'm just going to fold my page in three. Um, I'm doing a very bad job of it right now. And it doesn't have to be beautifully pretty, but just approximately in three. So you have three columns going down your page. I'll give you, I'll give you a minute or two to do that. It can just be a scrap piece of paper or a notebook, doesn't matter. Okay, so if you have your three, I'm actually just gonna rip this page out. I didn't do a very good job of that. Um, if you have your page, got three what we're going to do now is in the very first column only I want you to write down all of your strengths the things that you know about yourself these might be things that your colleagues and your friends would say that you're good at as well okay so just itemize them all the things that you're good at I'll give you about three minutes to do that okay so what you should have is a column full of all of your strengths because we are strong women. Okay, the next part of this is I want you to take a little bit of time, again, I'll probably give you maybe about three minutes, to just individually reflect on an achievement that you are most proud of. Think about something that you have done that you have been successful that you think yeah, I'm really proud of this thing. That was a great achievement. Um, it needs to be about you, not about your son or your husband or your colleagues or um, it needs to be something about you, okay? So I'll give you a few minutes just to reflect on what this thing is for you, an achievement that you were most proud of. Okay, so as you're thinking about that achievement, in the second column, write down your reflections about that achievement in that middle column. Okay, so I'll start to bring your focus back again now. So what you should have in your left-hand column is all of the things that you see or perceive as your strengths. In the middle column, you will have an achievement that you think, 
I'm really proud of this. This thing happened and I did a good job of it. Okay? What we're going to do now is in pairs, or if you have three people in your room, that's also okay, is I would like for you to share your reflection with your colleague. Okay? So the way that this is going to work is that you take it in turns. One person will share their reflection with a colleague and their partner will listen to them really carefully and they will take notes of the strengths and capabilities that they hear, okay? Um, and your colleague can just take notes in dot points. The important thing through this activity is that um, after your, after the first person has shared their reflection is that you, you know, your partner has an opportunity to share back all of the capabilities that they heard, okay? So what normally happens is sometimes we hear things and we see things um, in other people that we don't always know about ourselves, okay? So for example, if I had an opinion that, oh, I think I'm a great collaborator and I, you know, I think I'm good at communicating um, and I'm really kind to people, other people might see all these other strengths in me. So this is an opportunity to see your own strengths from somebody else's view, okay? So what I will do is hand over to you. So each person will share their narrative their partner will record all of the strengths and capabilities they hear. They will then share back to the person who they recorded. And then you're going to swap over and do the opposite. Okay? So what I will do is if you are sitting next to somebody, so Mary Aperi, I can see that you have two of you there. Josephine, there's a few of you. There's three of you there. Is that right? So you guys can work together. Um, Sarah and Nis, you guys are together in Caravat. I'm going to, and also um, Mary and Ada, you're in Sigari together. I'm just trying to map. It's hard to see really who's here. Um, I'm going to connect in breakout rooms. Um, oh, Sharon has dropped out, I think. Oh, Sharon has just joined. Okay, I'm going to put Sharon and Pauline into a breakout room together. Um, and Pauline, you might need to guide Sharon a little bit because she dropped out for a little while. I'm going to put... Oh, I can see Vanimo. Mary, you guys have two people in the room, so you guys can do that together. And I also have Bai and Mary, but I might put in the room together. Okay? If anyone has any questions, throw them in the chat box now, and I'll just uh, make a couple of breakout rooms very quickly. Okay. So I'm about to the, open the rooms. So for Bai, Emmeline, Pauline, Sharon, Mehdi, and Meriba, you guys will go into breakout rooms and do this activity. And for everybody else, can you please do this activity with the people around you? If you have any questions, um, just ask me in the chat box or unmute. I'll stay in this main room for you. Um, and we'll probably take about 15 minutes for both of you to share and reflect and write down some additional strengths on your list in your third column. Okay, opening those rooms now. Okay, so welcome back everyone. What we have done that now is everybody should have a list, number one, of all of the strengths that are self-identified. You have a uh, you know, a narrative or a story about something that you think, oh, I'm so proud of this, I did well, that's a great achievement. And you will also have a list now of some of the strengths that other people see in you. So I'm curious, um, how did that make you feel doing this process? 
I would like to share that. Okay. In, for me to get my colleague to, to identify the strengths in me made me know myself. Mm. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. Here's somebody else's perception. Great. And in the chat box, felt happy. That's awesome. What else? You can add in the chat box or unmute your microphone. How did other people feel? Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. I was with Maddie in our breakout room and uh, we were sharing especially my uh, strengths. We didn't have time to go into her strengths, but that was okay. She was able to give, you know, go through her strengths with me. I was calling out to you when we were leaving that uh, I do endorse everything that you said, but I'm not sure whether she heard me or not. Anyways, uh, I felt elevated in my spirit this, this afternoon. Uh, after I had gone through my strengths, uh, I was uh, um, happy that um, Maddie was, you know, just saying yes, she agreed with me and uh, she started off by saying that we had known each other for a couple of years now since uh, we first met. That was uh, when my late husband was still around and we were at uh, the National Research Institute. At that time then, um, like I was, I was without a job too. I wasn't teaching. Anyways, uh, my strengths were uh, being able to communicate. I think uh, I can communicate effectively, uh, both in language, speaking and writing. And I guess th the training that I had gone through Uh, helped me to do that, which is uh, during the college uh, years because I was trained uh, to teach English. So that's an accomplishment over a long period of time. Uh, part of the team. Uh, especially as a leader, it has helped me to uh, also acquire some leadership skills and be able to, to lead um, other colleagues uh, at the same level and communicating between uh, them amongst ourselves as well as other teachers and the admin. Uh, this is not easy. Uh, it requires a lot of uh, critical thinking and um, also understanding uh, channels of communication and how we should communicate all these uh, are very important so that we, we don't, uh, you know, break uh, protocols and, and so I'm always mindful of this. So teaching over, you know, uh, some years at least has given me that uh, the knowledge, how I can, who I can go to, how to communicate and so on. Those are some of the recent uh, accomplishments and I guess I'm, I'm proud of it because to me it's like an opportunity that maybe as uh, I'm getting ready that I can uh, maybe do for the department and leave behind when I, when I exit or retire. Thank you. Yeah, fantastic. That's fantastic and thanks for sharing there about that. Um, I can hear that you've got so many strengths that you're aware of within yourself. Oh, I can see in the chat box, uh, M has said, quite moved doing this exercise, both listening to Bai and her amazing strengths and sharing my own strengths and achievements. Pauline, listening to Sharon made me realize it's important to give the opportunity to others to talk about themselves in that manner and for us to know each other rather than being biased and making assumptions because we don't know them well. That's also a really great insight. I find um, doing these types of activities, sometimes it's difficult to talk about ourselves because 
Um, particularly in PNG, we know like humility is um, really where people are at. They don't like to say, oh, I'm really good at this. But you know what? The, it's, this is not about boasting. It's about saying these are my strengths and this is how I can use my strength to create improvement. Okay, so especially when we're working as a team, everyone will bring the different strengths and all of our strengths together can actually create improvement for each other and for people beyond each other. So that's um, one of the really key things. So I'm going to ask one more question. From this activity, who learned something new about their strengths from their partner? Hi. Uh my colleague and I discussing some things I didn't know about myself. She mentioned, so I was happy to find out from her what some of the strengths in me. Like she said, I was helpful, mm -hmm. which I did not realize uh, in myself. I was alert. Mm -hmm. and I listened to people. I didn't realize that I was like it. But uh, hearing from my friend, I was happy to hear that. And yeah. It kind of boosted my spirit to us. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I love that. I love that. And it's so important for us to, like, keep feeding off each other and listening to each other because, um, of course, we know that the things that we see in ourselves are just the very start of it. It's how other people see us as well, and they build us up. So that's what I hear has happened today with both of you. So that's fantastic. Thank you for sharing. Um, this. Hi Anna, hi everyone. <coughs> hi. Um, I've just learned one word. And the word was uh, innovative. Innovative. Um, that's the uh, new word that I haven't uh, expected. And the, uh, I'm yeah. thankful that maybe I'll do more. <laughs> yes. I'll That's have uh, awesome. Sarah share hers. Mm -hmm. That would be great. Hi, everyone. Hi, Sarah. Um, thank you. Um, just uh, I also learned that um, I am positive uh, and I keep to my words. Ah, uh, that's... the position that I'm holding. So I'm grateful for that. Uh, that I'm, I mean, I don't realize this, but uh, I'm glad that I am told that I do those. So I'm happy to hear that. Thank you. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you both for sharing. And so integrity, isn't that an amazing um, gift? It was such a good strength that people perceive in you. And innovation, that's what we need, our whole STEM industry. This, go, innovate. <laughs> awesome. So we might keep moving, but this, is, um, this has been really fantastic to just to surface some of these things. What I always recommend is now that you have a bank of some of these things that you see as your strengths, keep them somewhere um, and remind yourself of them, okay? Um, everybody has their ups and downs. Everybody has those days that you um, have a bad teaching day or a bad leadership day or somebody criticizes you. Um, it's important to reflect on the things that, um, you know, that we know we're good at and use those things to improve um, what you're doing and improve what's happening around you, okay? So keep them safe because we're going to refer back to them when we start working a little bit more as a team, okay? Um, I'm going to share my screen again quickly and actually the last thing that I'm going to say about strengths is that sometimes if we overuse a strength it can be a weakness okay so while it's important to lean on them be mindful that you don't overuse just that one strength try and use all of your strengths Okay, so we have about 15, 20 minutes left. I'm going to hand over to Pauline um, to talk a little bit more about mindset. But before we do, I'm going to press play on this video and then I'll hand over.
Researcher and professor Carol Dweck uses the term mindset to describe the way people think about ability and talent. Dweck delineates between two different mindsets that exist on a continuum. The first is the fixed mindset, which suggests that your abilities are innate and unchangeable. The second is a growth mindset, which views it as something you can improve through practice. In a fixed mindset, you view failure as permanent, but with a growth mindset, you see failure as a chance to learn and even pivot. Those with a fixed mindset are more likely to view critical feedback as a personal attack, while those with a growth mindset will see it as a chance to improve, where they can develop new systems. With a fixed mindset, you're more likely to choose easier tasks and put in minimal effort. After all, if talent is fixed, why bother improving? Why even try? But with a growth mindset, you're more likely to embrace challenging tasks and work hard to improve. Those with a fixed mindset are likely to give up when they face an obstacle. Meanwhile, those with a growth mindset will view obstacles as a chance to experiment and solve problems. In a fixed mindset, the focus is on measurable accomplishments. But with a growth mindset, the focus is more on a journey of continual improvement. With a fixed mindset, you are less likely to take creative risks. But with a growth mindset, creative risks are simply a way to innovate and improve. Ultimately, your mindset influences everything from creative risk-taking to how you do feedback to whether or not you finish difficult tasks. And in the end, it's one of the greatest factors in determining whether or not you grow and improve in your abilities. Okay, Pauline, I might hand over to you now um, and just let me know when you want me to click onto the next slide. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, <clears throat> these are uh, two you can see in your um, screen there a growth mindset and a fixed mindset. Uh, this um, is with a growth mindset. Uh, like we've uh, seen the short video, it's to do with how um, we have we use uh, opportunities and challenges that comes our way to challenge ourselves to think out of the box and not limit ourselves. More or less, looking at ourselves and thinking that uh, I don't think I can do that. Um, okay. So the activity she was going to lead, um, just one was re a really quick one, just two minutes reflection with the person next to you or if nobody's with you, think about a time when you have experienced a fixed mindset, okay? Um, we've all done this at different times. Um, so just like one or two minutes, talk to the people next to you, share an experience you've had or reflect on it if you're by yourself. It's two minutes. Yeah, that's just um, looking at uh, our situation as women, where we tend to uh, judge ourselves and put ourselves in a context where we think that we can't do it. And that's where fixed mindset comes in. So if we are given a chance and try to <clears throat> think out of the box and uh, in that situation where, like I just used an example, if we are given an opportunity to be um, mistress of the ceremony, for example, and you think, oh, I might try try to do that and see if I can do a good job. And when we do a better job, then it makes us see that we actually, we can speak, uh, we can uh, talk in front of an audience. That's where some sometimes I see myself as a woman that, I think that I can present in front of the audience and that's where the fixed mindset comes in. But when I try to challenge myself and take a step forward, then I can see that uh, I can do a much better job and there's a, always a chance.
chance of growth and an improvement. Yeah, so uh, these are some of the examples we can use when we discuss some of the situations that we face in our uh, job as teachers leaders. Uh, we can um, draw from this experience. Thank you. <clears throat> Awesome. Thanks, Pauline. And as we're doing this, I know that you would, everybody has those um, times that you do have the experience of overcoming challenges and feeling like I've got this and I've learned something new and I've actually got the confidence to continue to push and to progress and to grow. Um, so it all really does come down to how you deal with the challenges around you because we all have them at different times. And as Pauline said, um, you know, sometimes it's an opportunity that presents itself and it's just whether we choose to, you know, be closed and fixed or whether we choose to, um, you know, use that growth mindset. And it takes time and practice to feel comfortable to take on those challenges at different times. But they're really great examples, Pauline. So thanks for sharing. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit um, about like leading on from mindset, um, just referring to a little bit of, I guess, research around mindset and around how we create changing cultures. Um, I'm going to talk about failing forward. So we talk about... Um, having the opportunity to learn but as um you know as educators particularly we hate to fail you know it's our job to uh, mark the kids tests and to be teaching them and to be showing them the correct way and we're, we're so fixed sometimes in our approach around making sure that everything's right and done well but we're really bad at failing ourselves okay so it means that when we're really conditioned to not have any failure around us, it means we're limiting the opportunities to learn and to progress, okay? Because we actually have to fail, you have to take risks, and you have to get things wrong to learn, okay? So it's a mindset shift for us as educators particularly to take risks this way. And I'm, I just talk about it as failing forward. Okay, we don't fail and fall backwards. You fail and you fall forward and you get up and you move forward again. Okay, so you'll hear me use this term with you at different times because it's about failing forward. You get up, you leverage your mistakes or you leverage your learning and then we continue to move forward. Okay, so think about it as a human success. If things feel confusing and muddy and you feel like it's, um, you know, tripping over all the time, that's a good thing because it means you're learning, okay? And this is actually what we have to do in our spaces. If we want to be modeling strong learning behaviors for our students and for our peers, especially when we're around really complex challenges, we actually have to fail. We actually have to be okay with failing and have the mindset that it's not a bad thing to um, have these challenges and feel like you're failing because you're actually not. The second thing I'll talk about, and feel welcome to use this with your students because it's a really great analogy as well. We talk about the learning kit and it represents taking on challenges. Um, at different times, we can sit on the edge of a challenge and we can go, oh, look, I think I know where I need to go. I think I can kind of see the other side of the learning kit and it makes sense um, maybe what, what I might need to do. And so we embark on the challenge but we end up in you know, what we call the learning pit. We end up in this pit going, oh, this is not what I thought. I'm really confused. I don't know how to get out of this. Um, it's way too complex. And this is when that fixed or growth mindset really matters. Um, and we would have all had this experience before where you end up in the learning pit and you're not sure exactly how to get out, okay? Um, so what we talk about is this is where you fail forward and you are then able to work hard at it, figure out what works, and once you're out of the learning pit on the other side, it's much easier to look back and then see, like, all right, look how far we've come. Like, that was a challenge, that was a pit. And that stuff builds resilience, grit, 
tenacity, perseverance, and that builds a growth mindset. So feel welcome to use this with your students because we know, especially with your senior students, when they're going through their examination schedules and the pressure's on, it's okay to be in the learning kit, but we got to climb out of it and we need to use all of these skills to be able to navigate it. And they're those, you know, those human skills that we really want um, for everybody to have. So I'm mindful of time, so we won't discuss this, but feel welcome to discuss this after our workshop today. When have you been stuck in the learning pit? Okay, there would have been a million times throughout your career or, you know, even through your own personal life or with your community where you have that moment that you just think, my goodness, this is so tough. I don't want to do it anymore. I don't know how to get out of it. But you learn your way through it. And then the, um, it seems like a much less lesser challenge once you're out of the learning group. Okay. Um, I'm going to leave this here because this is Medi's next section and we actually don't have a full amount of time for it today. And I don't want to do a disservice to Medi's work because it's um, some really quality stuff. However, what I might do is I'll stop sharing my screen for a second. Um, and Medi, if, if you want to just um, share for a couple of minutes what we will cover next fortnight when we meet back together again. Hi everyone, <laughs> and thanks, Anna. So, um, for next fortnight, I'll be taking you through the cow cow culture and what that means, and how, as Papua New Guinean women. we can um, try to have some reflections and get a bit more articulated of who we are and what we are capable of doing to moving us forward to thinking and working with our mindsets that Anna has talked about to leveraging us to another level of freedom, <laughs> if you like, in your mind about where we have come from, where we are today, and what it might be for us if we uh, understand a bit more about our background and who, where we have come from. So I'll uh, take us through with that in our next um, sharing in a fortnight's time. So I'm looking forward to unpacking that a little bit more uh, next time around. Thanks, Anna. That's perfect. Thanks, Mehdi. Um, and I'm just going to click through these slides quickly. But Mehdi will share um, this with you next fortnight, of course. And there's some really great work around um, culture. So we'll start to, as Mehdi said, do a deeper dive into, well, what, what is the culture that currently exists and what is the culture that we would like to create as a group of women um, trying to create improvement, okay? So your flipped task for this fortnight, the same as how I sent those articles across the WhatsApp group, um, I won't be sending any articles, but I will be reminding you of these two questions. Actually, it's only one question. This first question. As you go around your school this week and you're working with your students, your colleagues, your principals, your you know leaders in your community, try and pay attention to what their strengths are and tell them if you see it, okay? If you see someone and you're like, wow, that's a really interesting strength, let them know because it builds people up as it did today with you guys. It validates the good things that we want to see repeated in our spaces. So if somebody is using their strength to create good, support it, reinforce it, validate it, um, let them know so that they also feel good about using that strength over and over again, okay? 
So that's a little bit of homework. That's a tiny piece of homework. I'm sure you're giving your students way more homework than that. Um, but I look forward to having this discussion at the start of our next fortnight's workshop and kicking off with Medi and culture. <laughs> awesome. I'll stop sharing my screen now, but thank you everyone for your energy today. I wish we were face to face because I want to listen and hear everybody's strengths. That would be my favorite part of the day. You guys get to hear each other's, but I, I want to hear yours too. Yeah. <laughs> but um, thank you and have a fantastic afternoon. If you want to stay online and have a chat for five minutes, you're welcome to. Otherwise, I know you're busy. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for making the effort.